Hello and welcome to Digital Jeepney. My name is Hazel and I'm here to teach you how to program the keyboard on the IVCS3. Let's start by turning off the sequencer to mute the pre-programmed pattern. Next, switch input channels 1 and 2 to DKKS to use the keyboard as our input. The corresponding module would be this, and on the matrix it would be this. Now we can choose whether to use the keyboard as a controller only or as a sound source. Let's switch input channel 1 to keyboard voltage to use the keyboard as a control input. Now let's switch input channel 2 to dynamic voltage so we can later use this input to dress up our sound. Next, let's move on to our input matrix and let's choose oscillator 1 and the square wave of oscillator 2 as our sound sources and run them through the filter. My choice of oscillators is my personal preference and you're free to choose any or all of the three oscillators if you wish. For simplicity's sake, I'll follow the same signal path as in previous tutorials and run the filter through the envelope. And from there, I'll bring the signal into our output channels 1 and 2. As you can hear, we have a sound coming out of the IVCS3. If you're not hearing anything, you might have to tweak your oscillators, your filter, or your envelope. Now let's bring the keyboard in the mix and use it to control the frequencies of oscillators 1 and 2. Now let's see if it works. Okay, great. Now it's time to gate the signal so that it's triggered only by pressing the keyboard. Let's go over to our envelope module and set this off parameter to manual. Now to see if the keyboard is working properly. And we're not getting any sound from the keyboard, which means it's not opening the gate as expected. So let's go over to the back panel and see what we missed. And there you have it. Right now the envelope can only be triggered by the sequencer, so let's switch that over to DK and see if it works. Wonderful, our keyboard is now working, but it's not set to standard tuning just yet. So let's go over to oscillator 1, double tap on the frequency dial and input the numbers 369.99. Now of course I didn't dream up this number, I just found it in the manual. Careful not to set the response of the filter module to its maximum because it's going to start oscillating and you're going to get a sound that isn't controlled by the keyboard. Now let's set oscillator 2 close to oscillator 1, detuning by just a bit to produce richer timbres. So now we have a semi-functioning keyboard. These upper keys seem to be sounding off properly while the lower keys are practically useless. It took a lot of hair pulling to learn that I have to set the input level module a certain way to get all 12 notes in an octave. As per the advice of this little, almost inconspicuous eye here, we have to set the input level to 0.32 for the left and right channels to get all these notes working properly on the keyboard. That kind of solves part of this huge mystery of an instrument, and I can now play the IVCS3 with my own patches. At this point, we can dress up our patch by further introducing other elements into the mix. Now I'm gonna throw in the noise module for modulating our filter. That makes for a less sterile, more interesting sound. Input channel 2, which is the keyboard's dynamic voltage, can also modulate the filter setting. We can also introduce the ring modulator into the mix by running some of our sound sources through it and into the envelope to keep the signal from spilling into the output without being triggered. Now if you notice, our signal path ends with the envelope going into the output. We can still further process this signal by inserting it into our reverb for example and running the reverb into our output like so. It's pretty much working like a send effect, in which case you should max out the mix setting and adjust the level to bring in the desired amount of reverb to the mix. 
We can leave the settings that way or we can map some of the parameters to our joystick to come up with evolving sounds. Here I assign the frequency of oscillator 2 to joystick movements left and right and the filter setting to joystick movements up and down. Remember to limit your left and right joystick range to keep oscillator 2 from detuning too much. The IVCS3 has a bunch of effects in the back panel, so feel free to use the flanger or the delay to give your sound a more stereophonic effect. If some of your keys don't sound off when playing really, really fast, then go to settings and switch from new to VCS3. To get trippy sounding bass patches, just divide the frequency of oscillator 1 by 1 half or 1 fourth of 369.99 to access the lower octaves. And that concludes today's tutorial. As always, go crazy with it!